All right, the Evo's head is back on. The new cams are in there. Let's tie it all together. Let's get this timing all set up. All the new timing components are gonna go on this car today. Welcome back to Boosty Friends. It's October, so it's cold now. So I gotta wear this hoodie. Not my favorite. All right, last week we finished getting the head on the car. That was a big step. Got the new cams in there. And today we gotta put the timing all back together. So because we're going to the new ECU, we're going to a new crank trigger, which is a Kigley 12 tooth crank trigger. It's actually a 12 minus one, so there's one tooth missing. We'll get a little bit more into that later. Uh, also have to modify the cam trigger. Also something we'll go over once we get to that step. Before we dive right in, still chasing a thousand subscribers, hit that subscribe button, help me out. It's fun, let's do it together. All right, first up, last week, forgot to order camshaft seals. So I got these little guys. They are uh, not the camshaft seals that I ordered. Thanks, USPS. These are correct. They're just not OEM Mitsubishi. We'll make them work. And if they don't, I'll eventually have the Mitsubishi ones. So we're gonna get those put in there real quick and then we're gonna move on to some of the timing stuff because those camshaft seals do go behind the cam gears. They have to go in first. So this cam seal goes right in here around the camshaft and seals against the head. It's a pretty tight fit. So the easiest way usually is to take a socket that is about the same size in this case, a one and a half inch. And then you can use that to evenly get it into the hole. You will wanna use some lubrication on both the inside and the outside of this thing. I'm just using some engine oil. I'm pretty sure my arms were in the way the entire time I was doing that, but new cam seals and I need better lighting. Okay, so now that the cam seals are all done, we can move on to the fun shiny bits. This is a 12 minus one tooth crank trigger from Kigley Racing. Let's see if I can explain this a little bit. This has 12 teeth on it. Technically it has 11, it has one missing. The factory Evo crank trigger has two teeth on it and it uses a completely different sensor to pick up where those two teeth are. This kit actually uses an Evo cam angle sensor on the front of the engine. This is on the crankshaft and it has this little keyway right here that keeps it in place on the crankshaft. And then this sensor goes right here and it's got a little magnet. So every time one of these teeth passes in front of this sensor, it feeds that information to the ECU. The factory crank trigger wheel has two teeth on it. This one has 12, 11. What that does is it gives the ECU more information every time the crank spins. You can kind of think of it as trying to read a clock that only has two numbers on it. So if you had a clock and all it had was an hour hand and it had 12 and six on it, just two teeth, basically. You would be able to kind of tell what time it is based on where that hour hand is. But if it had 12 numbers on it, you'd be able to be much more accurate. That's basically what this is doing, is it's giving the ECU a much more accurate representation of where the crank is in its rotation so that it knows when to do anything with the engine that is timing based. When to fire fuel injectors, when to fire the spark plug. This one tooth that's missing there will let the ECU also know that every time that one tooth goes past that's missing, like, oh, we know exactly where the crank is now in its full rotation. It will be easier to tune the car more accurately this way. This kit comes with this little uh, adapter bracket, which allows you to move away from that factory uh, crank position sensor to use this cam position sensor. So kind of sits in there, 
you'll kind of see it a little bit better once it's on there. Once this is in there, the distance that this has to be away is a very specific distance. It's actually a range uh, that's called an air gap. The air gap needs to be between 25 and 35 thousandths of an inch. Kigley Racing does provide you with some little, very, very thin washers uh, in case you need to space that out a little bit. One of these bolts that holds this on is actually the bolt that used to hold on the balance shaft. So you do need a balance shaft delete in order to be able to do this. Uh, and then that bolt also has oil behind it. So it's important to use some type of thread sealer on that specific bolt. We'll get all of this stuff ready to go, pull off the stock crank angle sensor, and then go from there. So this is the factory connector for the crank angle sensor right now. And typically that runs through this little hole right here next to the power steering pump. And you'd usually have to remove the power steering pump in order to feed this connector down through that little hole. But what I tend to do is actually de-pin this connector and then just pull the wires through and then re-pin it on the other side. We actually won't be using this anymore. The Kigley Racing actually comes with its own connector and it runs up the back side of the engine up through here and then we'll connect to the wiring harness back there, which once again makes a little bit less wiring running over top of the engine, which makes everything a little bit more clean. So another win. This gold part here is the Evo's factory crank angle sensor, and it's got these two wings on it, and those are the only two points on here that it uses for measurement. So, going from two teeth to the new 12 teeth. This is that balance shaft pulley that I was talking about earlier. And then this is that bolt hole that actually has oil behind it. So that's the one that you'll need to use thread sealer on. Time to put these cam gears back on there. Okay, so all of the timing marks that need to be lined up is, there's a timing mark on the valve cover right here, and there's a mark on the cam gear right here. That is the same on this side. There's a mark on the cam gear right here, and on the valve cover right here. Those need to be lined up. And then underneath, there is a mark on the new crank trigger right there that lines up with a little mark right there on the oil pump cover. And then same over here on this, the oil pump gear. There's a mark there that lines up with a little arrow right there. All those things need to be lined up as you're putting the timing belt on. Okay, so got the timing all done and it's tensioned right now with just the adjustment. I haven't pulled the pin yet. Um, I'm going to go underneath the car now and turn the engine over through all of its cycles and then make sure that once it goes through a full cycle that all of the timing marks are still lined up. Ready to pull the pin. All right, hit the deck. Hmm. Underwhelming. All right. We got the timing done. It's blue. That's pretty cool. Next up, 
we gotta modify this, which is the cam angle sensor. In the instructions that come with the Kigley 12 tooth crank angle sensor, it tells you how to modify this. As you can see here, it tells you to cut off this. When you have that 12 tooth trigger wheel sending the ECU more information, it no longer needs two reference points for the camshaft, it only needs one. So we're cutting off one of these teeth basically. If somebody knows exactly why it works that way and when you have more information going to the ECU via the crankshaft, you need less information from the camshaft, do you let me know in the comments because I'm interested. I don't exactly know how it works, but I know that I have to do it and then we'll figure out the ECU tuning part later. So. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off there and then get this installed. There we go, cut that tooth off of there, clean this up a little bit so it's nice and smooth, no rough edges. Make sure you clean this off. Good, getting a little metal shavings that might be on there. Off there, this does sit in oil, so don't want metal shavings in your oil. It's a good motto, good way to live your life. No metal shavings in your oil. Okay, let's uh, get the rest of this put back together. As you can see here, the valve cover is actually not back on the car yet. And that's because we're going to be doing a lot of work to that thing. I think we're going to wrap up today's video right there. But next week, we're going to be doing a bunch of work to that valve cover. And then we're going to start adding some of the odds and ends of this build um, and start wrapping stuff up. Really start getting this thing back together. And then I'm going to take my first dive into standalone ECUs. So never done anything like that before. Still got the whole harness to come. There's still a lot more going on with this build so stick around subscribe it helps me out a ton we just hit 500 on our way to a thousand do it I just